uh, the Danny Ainge comments after Kyrie. Which we have. Uh, he was on 98.5 in Boston. Was it uh, yesterday or the day, day before? Was it? But the anyway, hub? Yeah. here's what he said when he was asked about Kyrie's comments that uh, there is some racism in Boston and sometimes in that arena. I never heard any of that from any player that I've ever played with in my 26 years in Boston. I never heard that before from Kyrie, and I talked to them quite a bit. So I don't know. I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter. You know, we're just playing basketball. Players can say what they want. Do you think when a player like that makes a statement about Boston and this team and its fans that it could influence – other players as to a whether or not they want to come here or b whether or not they want to stay here and i think that uh everybody's influencing somebody um so yeah i think that there's my fear that that could possibly happen but i think that our players and players that have played here in the past all have their own experiences to share and uh you know it's just one player Rob, quickly before you go on this, is that no, because he was playing with Greg Kite and Kevin McHale and <laughs> Larry Bird and, and, and all that? Is that why he didn't? I mean, where's Danny been? Danny, look, this is literally, we use this word all the time, Rob. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. I'm using the word literally right now. Literally. Yes. Unbelievable. Meaning I can't believe that. I'm sorry. I, and I, I've dealt with Danny obviously over the years, and and I've I've had good, I like Danny. I've had great conversations with him and all that. But this is unbelievable. I can't believe that he's never. I mean, where you been? Because all the players, Rob Tristan Thompson's coming out saying, "Yeah, oh, oh my gosh, yes." When I was an opponent, these are his stuff. players, Chris. Right. right now, this isn't twenty years from ago. What is he talking about? This is the part, and I'm with you. It's unbelievable that he could put his lips together, Chris, and this to come out of his mouth. He doesn't have to rip all the people of Boston or the good people, but don't turn a blind eye. This is what people are talking about, Chris, all the time. When we tell you there's a problem, don't tell us that there's no problem or you never heard of it. We're telling you there's a problem. That's the problem. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. That's the problem is that you don't want to hear what we're telling you. Yes. Hello. And then Bill Russell. You want to read stuff about Bill Russell when his time in Boston? We could go down the line. Corn, Absolutely. Cornbread, Cornbread Maxwell. Cornbread Maxwell is there. I mean, he's, can, he calls their games. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling, Chris. And you know what? When we're pre-show talking, Rob G., who's not a general manager, who's not a former NBA player, who's not white, who's not black. I mean, he was like, dude, it's so simple to answer that question. Yes, we have some issues. It's not everybody. There's always bad apples and bad people in every city. Do you, do you, Chris, is it that hard to... To no. put out that answer, is you that, say is look, that hard? Unfortunately, I have heard things over the years. Yes, and it's, um, and it's I mean, bad. It's well documented that, that we've got some great fans. The we overwhelming majority fans. are great, but yeah, we've had some things, and, and we want to stop it. And and hopefully that ends, and no other player has to go through. It's something like that. That's it. That's it. And yeah, I I Marcus here's Smart a, here's Rob a, here's a talked about him him having something like that happen to him. Outside of the arena. I'm not talking about in the city of Boston. I'm talking about right outside the re- arena as he was leaving a game. A woman in a in a, an Isaiah Thomas jersey called him the N-word as he was trying to help her. Here's a, uh, here's a tweet by Keith Smith from Jalen Brown, Chris. I'm going to read this quote. This ain't 10 years ago. This is hot off the presses. I know not every Celtics fan is a racist. We have a lot of fans from all walks of life and all colors. Painting every Celtics fan as racist is unfair. But Boston, we have a lot of work to do. Period. End quote. When did he put that out, Rob? Jalen. It just came out. Today. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? And Jalen's very conscientious. 
But but you he's know, saying, he went down to Atlanta and marched, and yeah, he, he's about that. But we're not, what, Chris. If we sat there and said everybody in Boston's racist, all the fans, it's ridiculous. That would be ridiculous for us to say that. That right. would be ridiculous. But to ignore the fact that there are issues in Boston, if I, I mean, if I'm a player now and I heard Danny Ainge say that, I, I, I would, I would have an issue with him. I really would, because he's putting his head in the sand. I don't care who he voted for. I don't care all those other things. But, but. To, to turn a blind eye and, and say in his 26 years, he never heard anything from any of his teammates or ever saw anything, Chris. That, that's You just said it. What would you say it was? It's um, unbelievable. unbelievable. It, it really, literally, the, uh, taking that word literally, it's hard to believe that that's been the case. It just, it, it just is. And, you know, you hear coaches, and I know Danny's not the coach, but he's, you know, in the front office. But, you know, you hear Greg Popovich and Steve Kerr and Phil Jackson, when he was coaching, talk about how they talk to their players about stuff like this. I mean, heck, you're dealing with a league that's 75% black. And Danny was close with Doc and probably still is, Doc Rivers. I mean, it's hard for me to believe they haven't ever talked about race. <laughs> and Doc Rivers ain't shy about it. And Doc no. Rivers has been, had his own uh, episodes, Chris. The house was burned down in San Antonio. Burned to the ground. So Danny, I... I I'm I'm guessing that, I mean, I would think if he looks back, he understands. Look, I, 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 I took, I took the wrong route. I should have just said, talked about it honestly, because I don't think he talked about this honestly. Maybe he did, but I, it's hard for me to believe. And, that. and nobody wanted Danny Ainge to paint the whole city with with one brush, right, Chris. Right. That's not what. No, that, not but acknowledge all. it. Just look, acknowledge it. And Boston fans say, well, it's not only – yeah, you're right. The whole country has been racist. There's no doubt about that. And you got teams in the South. You got a teams in New Orleans. All right? So, yeah, Louisiana, a lot of my family still lives down there. And as much as my family loves Louisiana and our roots down there, man, I got some family that is just hates the racism down right. there and has had some terrible experiences in Louisiana. And still the politics down there are crazy. Right. And so, yeah, the New Orleans, you know, it's not just the Celtics. But don't, as you said, Rob, don't put your head in the sand. And I would say this to fans, too. Just because you really like some black athletes, those right. fans who are white or non-black, just because you really, you know, adore, you know, maybe even idolize some of these black athletes, that doesn't mean you can't be racist or do some racist things. Or, or, or Chris, here's the other one. People thought we were in a post-racial society when o B Barack Obama, B Obama was elected president. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Not oh, yet. it's all over now. We had a black president. <laughs> so now, oh, right. we're, we're, we're past that. We don't need to go to that route or bring that up. Are you kidding me? It, didn't, it was the act, ab absolute it got opposite. a little worse, it seems. Am I right? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it was opposite, Chris. It, it, right. beter, it became like, uh, What? And then not only that, he won two terms. He right. won two terms. Right. And I think, and the thing is, like I said about the athletes, you know, just because you genuinely feel affection for them. Like, Rob, people go to the Kentucky Derby and cheer for horses. All right? Animals. So don't tell me because you're cheering for, for black athletes that that means you might not have some racist views because you're cheering for horses too. And, and, and you can develop an emotional attachment, a real emotional attachment and bond to your pet. We got a little, my, my grand, my uh, daughter has a little dog now and we all love him. Bo, we all have a little emotional attachment to him, especially my daughter. He's a is dog a, though. We know he it? ain't equal, right? So just because you have this emotional attachment to these black athletes, what is, what is your real view? Be honest with yourself. Race, ending the racism is treating the black people with respect. Treating the black athletes with respect. And the black people who, Rob, we, neither you or I, we couldn't run a 4 three forty. Nope. Not we if can't, we tried. We couldn't dunk. I mean, I could dunk back in the day. I had hops. But I can't yeah, dunk okay. anymore. <laughs> we could, we, we're not great athletes. Treat all African Americans with respect. And, you know. And that's when you really respect black people and aren't racist, when you treat them with respect. 
And so I, I don't want to hear it just, oh, we cheer. We love, we loved Kevin Garnett. I mean, you, Rob, the athletes have said the organization, you know, everything was great. But then their experiences in the city, some of them have said have been terrible. I told you I told you I had a terrible situation in Boston. It really gave me a bad taste for the city. Um, is it everybody? No, I, I have friends who live there. I mean, one of our good friends lives there. Mike Holly lo- really likes Boston. He does. Loves Boston. Who, he I, left I, I Chicago to go back there. Remember yep, that? Yep. He was a columnist at the Chicago Tribune in a great metropolitan city like Chicago and went back to Boston. Yep. And he's African-American. So, yeah, we're not painting the whole city with a broad brush. We're just saying the first steps to overcoming this issue we have in this country is we all have to be transparent. Can we, we acknowledge all have to it? Be right. Just yep. acknowledge it. Don't act like it's not happening or you don't know. You know what I mean? Like, like that we can't accept. 